Hello everyone, Mike here and today we're putting side by side the latest generation Apple handset, the iPhone 5 and the most popular heavyweight Android phone out there, the Samsung Galaxy S3. This might sound like an odd comparison as there are many differences between the iPhone 5 and the Samsung Galaxy S3, starting from their size and continuing with their OS. But if you're after a top smartphone this year and haven't yet chosen cams, you'll want to see this clip, so tag along. <laughs> From the first look, it's obvious that the iPhone 5 is a lot more compact than the Samsung Galaxy S3. And it's not just about the smaller footprint, but it's thinner and lighter as well. However, what really matters is how the devices feel in hand. The iPhone 5 is now a bit taller than the previous 4S, but it's still comfortable to use. I could still cover the entire screen with my thumb and easily access all the buttons around the body. On the Samsung Galaxy S3, not that much. Of course, having a way larger screen has its benefits. But the end product is wide and tall, so unless you're somehow related to Gulliver, using the phone easily with a single hand is not going to be always possible. Luckily, Samsung plays the important buttons wisely, and those are accessible, but covering the whole screen with your thumb is complicated and quite often I had to use my other hand in order to get certain things done. Thus, the iPhone 5 feels better in hand and will appeal to those potential buyers with regular size or smaller hands, whether men, women or children. The Samsung Galaxy S3 is larger, thus some might find it a bit uncomfortable to use or carry in their pocket. The slim body and the good ergonomics help, but only to some extent. Both these phones are good looking, that's for sure. However, the iPhone, with its glass and metal body, just feels overall more beautiful and sturdier than the Samsung SG S3 with its plastic body. In fact, that's probably the thing that I hate the most about this Samsung smartphone. The glossy plastic back panel that's slippery, scratches easy and catches fingerprints like crazy. On the other hand, the back panel can be removed, allowing you to access the battery, the microSD and micro SIM slots. On the iPhone, the battery is encased, the nano SIM slot is placed on the side and there's no way to extend the storage space. On the front faces, both phones feature a hard glass covered screen with a home button below. Samsung also integrates two Android capacitive buttons around it. On top of the screen, you'll find the HD front facing cameras, the speaker's grill and some sensors on both of them, plus a very useful notification LED on the Galaxy S3. On the sides, both the Samsung and the Apple handsets list a bunch of buttons and connectors. On the left, there's the volume rocker on the Galaxy S3, while the iPhone 5 has two distinct volume buttons and a customizable switch. On top, there's the power button on the iPhone and the headset jack and the secondary noise cancelling microphone on the Samsung. On the right, Samsung plays the power button in a way that makes it easily accessible with your thumb, while on the iPhone, there's only the nano SIM compartment here. And finally, on the bottom, there's a standard micro USB connector on the Samsung, useful for charging, connecting the phone to a computer and even outputting video content. On the iPhone, there's the headset jack, the speaker grills, but only the right one hides the speaker, and the new lightning port. Back to those rears, Apple placed the camera here, with the noise cancelling microphone and the LED flash next to it. On the Samsung, the camera sits in the middle, framed by the flash and the speaker. On both handsets, the camera lens is a bit exposed and might scratch in time, especially on the Galaxy S3, where it sits on a slight bulge, making it the most prominent point of that back cover. All in all, both the iPhone 5 and the Samsung Galaxy S3 are beautiful in their own way. The new iPhone is more compact than the Samsung, which makes it more comfortable to hold and use. Also, it feels sturdier and more durable, although the anodized aluminum used for the back tends to scratch easily. There's a reason the Galaxy S3 is larger than the iPhone 5. It packs a 4.8 inch screen as opposed to the 4 incher on Apple's handset, covered by a layer of Gorilla Glass. Both of them offer a 16 by 9 aspect ratio which makes them great for watching video content, but I find the display on the iPhone a bit too narrow for typing. In fact, when compared to the screen of the older iPhones, the new one is just longer, not wider. Resolution wise, the S3 sits at 720x1280 pixels, while on the iPhone you only get 640x1136 pixels. However, given the size difference, the iPhone actually has a higher pixel per inch density. Still, you'll hardly see any difference between the two, even when reading texts. The two screens are a bit different when it comes to the technology behind them. There's an IPS TFT panel on the iPhone 5 and a Super AMOLED on the Samsung Galaxy S3. In practice, the iPhone screen is slightly brighter, making it better outdoor. It's also more accurate when it comes to reproducing colors, as the S3 screen tends to oversaturate them iPhone 1 don't mind a bit brighter, unrealistic colors, but some of you might. When it comes to viewing angles, both screens are excellent when viewed heads on, but from extreme angles, the AMOLED panel on the Galaxy manages to better retain colors and details. 
All in all, the iPhone 5's Retina display is a bit more well-rounded than the Super AMOLED screen of the Samsung Galaxy S3, but the two are very close and in real life you'll hardly see any differences between the two. I'll leave you with some pictures that prove that. Android versus iOS, that's the never-ending debate when comparing the two interfaces of these phones. We're not going to get into details, but I will tell you that my tested Samsung features Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich, with Jelly Bean already available for it in some parts of the world. That's of course with TouchWiz on top, Samsung's own UI and set of customizations and apps. The iPhone 5 ships with iOS 6, the latest version of Apple's OS. Now, there are tons of differences between them starting with the screen unlocker and continuing with the way the content is displayed on home pages, the multitasking and notification panels and many others. iOS is still the smoother of the two, although with Jelly Bean, Android is a lot more fluent than it used to be. iOS is also simpler, more intuitive for inexperienced users, but for me it just feels old when compared to all the options and the features you get with Android. When it comes to apps, both phones have their particularities. Samsung bundles their S-Line apps on the Galaxy S3, as Memo, as Note or as Voice, plus all the known Google apps. The iPhone comes with its own set of standard apps, but has ditched some of the Google applications that were a big part of the overall experience, like the standard YouTube app and the Maps. Apple replaced those one with their own Maps, but we all know how that went. As for third-party software, both phones offer access to hundreds of thousands of those via the App Store and the Google Play Shop. I still tend to believe that there are more useful apps available for the iPhone, although in many cases more expensive than their Android counterparts. However, many of them still do not support the wider screen of the new handset, leaving you with two black bars on the sides, but that should get fixed in time. All in all, both phones are smooth and fast. The iPhone 5 feels a bit snappier when performing various tasks, but the Samsung Galaxy S3 just offers a lot more possibilities. Geeks will love them for sure, but the average Joe out there might find them a bit confusing. Of course, the hardware inside the two handsets helps push this consistent experience on both of them. My tested Samsung SGS3, the international version, runs on a quad-core Exynos platform, while the iPhone 5 was built on an Apple A6 CPU, which is in fact a dual-core crate processor. So you might think that the Samsung Galaxy S3 is going to be faster than the Apple iPhone 5, but in reality, it's not really so, which proves once again, if that was needed, that it's not about the numbers of cores inside the device, it's about how you use those cores. I'll leave you with some benchmark results and some regular tests showing you how the iPhone 5 and the Galaxy S3 perform during daily activities, just to see which one of the two is faster. I'd say the results are obvious, but we're talking about fractions of a second delays here, so you'll hardly see any differences between the two when actually using them. Both devices offer access to tons of content, with apps tied to their ecosystems. It's also fairly easy to add your own content on them, although the copy and paste process on the Android handset is a lot more pleasant than having to rely on that sluggish iTunes. When dealing with music, the two are versatile. They also pack decent headsets, nothing impressive though, and the new Apple earbuds tend to fall off my ear quite often, making them a bit uncomfortable, but others had no issues with them. The wider screen of the Samsung makes it better suited for watching videos, especially since the Samsung Galaxy S3 also offers support for a lot more types of video files and codecs. Still, the iPhone 5 will do as well, especially now with its 16x9 screen. As for games, well, there are plenty of decent ones for both these phones. I still believe there are more good games in the App Store than you can find for Android devices, but it's true that they tend to be more expensive in Apple stores. Also, for the time being, most of those games will leave you with black bars on the sides of the iPhone screen, since only a bunch of them offer support for the wider retina display. The two devices also deal well with the basic phone tasks, taking calls and texting. Once again, the iPhone 5 is a bit more comfortable to hold at your ear, and it also tends to do a better job at cancelling the exterior noise. But besides that, the calls were consistent on both handsets. On the other hand, the front camera on the Samsung is slightly crisper if you are interested in video calls, 
While the wider screen makes fast typing easier, something an avid texter will surely appreciate. As for cellular data, the Apple 5 is the first 4G LTE capable Apple handset and the Samsung SGS3 supports it as well. But there isn't any real difference in terms of speed between the two as both of them fly as long as you're in a 4G covered area. The cameras are, according to studies, among the most used features of a smartphone and both the Samsung Galaxy S3 and the Apple iPhone 5 feature awesome 8 megapixel shooters on their backs with flash. The camera on the iPhone seems to launch a bit faster, but the one on the Galaxy S3 only trails it by a little bit. And then, the camera on the Android handset comes with lots of manual options, while on the iPhone 5 the interface is as simple as it can be. The new iPhone finally supports panorama stills, but that's an old story for the Samsung, which is also able to shoot burst batches of pics. In terms of quality, I'd say the two are on par, with the iPad slightly winning when it comes to low-light shots. But I'll let you decide for yourself by having a look at the next pics. And the same stands for videos as well. There's an encased 1440 mAh battery on the iPhone 5 and a removable 2100 mAh on the Samsung that can be easily replaced if needed. However, while the battery on the Apple smartphone is significantly smaller, the two handsets are pretty much on par when it comes to everyday battery performances. In other words, both can last throughout the day even with medium to heavy use. But when playing video or music, the Samsung will last a bit longer, but you'll still need to look for that charger after a couple of hours. Both the Samsung Galaxy S3 and the Apple iPhone 5 start at $199 in the US with two-year contracts. That's of course for the cheapest 16GB entries. But while the SGS3 is sold by all the major carriers, T-Mobile does not have their new iPhone in their offer. Still, you can find it at Sprint, Verizon and AT&T. Outside the States, the two phones sell for pretty much the same price and you can even get the two for free in the UK and some EU countries when bundled with pricey contracts. If you're looking to buy them off contract though, expect the Samsung to be a little bit cheaper than the iPhone 5. In the end, it's obvious that both the iPhone 5 and the Samsung Galaxy S3 are among the best smartphones of the moment and fully showcase what iOS and Android ecosystems have to offer these days. You will favor one over the other in the end, based on your needs and habits, but that doesn't necessarily make one better than the other. They are just a bit different, which is a good thing as together they can cover a wider range of potential buyers. With that in mind, it's time to end this video. As always, thank you very much for watching and if you enjoyed our work, hitting that thumbs up button or sharing this clip to your friends would mean a lot to us. Anyway, before I'll go, I'm curious to know which of the two you consider sexier, so please leave your replies below and I'll see you all soon. Mm -hmm.